And then, um, Kara, if you would pull up the PowerPoint. I have my trusty staff sure. with me tonight. Um, you'll remember Kara Davis. Um, she's a planning tech that works with us and Lily Yigazu, who works the zoning administration division. We also have a new member of our team that started, um, I guess a couple months ago now, but at the end of June, and that's uh, Grace Davenport. She's a planner one. So she'll be working with us on Holland Hills as well. So we're getting help. It's just slow. <laughs> it's just slow going. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. If you could mute yourself, um, if you're not um, speaking, we'll go through um, the agenda. Kira, could you make yours full screen? Do you know how to do that? There you go. Yes. And then hop over to the agenda page. Okay, great. All right, so quick for the agenda, um, a brief welcome and roll call at the beginning. And before we go through the whole agenda, I wanted to give Supervisor Stork an opportunity to, if he's here, Nick, um, Supervisor Stork, yeah, he's, an opportunity. He's having, he's having difficulty logging into the meeting right now. I'm trying to. Okay. Okay. I'll go through the out. agenda. I'll go through the agenda. Just let me know uh, when he's back on and we'll get him um, going. Okay. Um, so welcome roll call. I'm going to go through my roll call real, really quickly and just um, if you could just unmute yourself um, and just say that you're here um, and then we'll go forward from there. Okay, I have Andy Height first. I'm here. Hi, Andy. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. Okay. And then I have Barbara saw her. Barbara, are you able to hear here. Here, everybody? Okay. Yes, I can hear everybody. Thanks. And then um, Kira or Grace, if one of you could email Miss Cutler, I think she tried to call me once or twice uh, to try to log in. Okay. If um, Grace could call her, because I'm currently getting ready to okay. call Miss Stanchis. Okay. Okay, sure. Um, okay, and then through oh Elise, you're next. I heard and saw you. I'm here. Okay, and then Grace is here, and then Jerry. Yes, I am here. I can hear you. Great, thanks, Jerry. And then Kay. Yes. Heard and saw you earlier. Okay. Yeah. Are you I'm, there? I'm, yes, I am. I hear you. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, that's okay. And then Lily, I heard and saw you earlier. And Nick, I saw you. Um, Bob Kinzer? Yes. Hi, Hi Bob. Thank you. Uh, Ron McCallum? I'm here. Hi, Ron. Hi Thank you. And then I have uh, Sarah Godfrey. Sarah, can you hear and see us? Yes, I can. I'm here. Thanks, Sarah. Mm -hmm. um, and forgot to introduce Sarah earlier. I apologize. Sarah, Sarah is our communications. Um, engagement specialist specialist for DPD. Um, she's going to be talking to us a little bit later about the survey platform that we're going to be using. Yep. Okay. Let's see. Let me make sure we get Millie and Lee on here. Okay. Hold on one second. Mary, Mary Tracy, I see you signed on. Can you hear me? Yes, Mary, we can hear you. Okay, good. 
Okay. And then um, Grace or Kira, any any luck getting people signed on? I haven't heard yet. Okay. I'm still working on getting million. All right, thanks everybody for your patience. I didn't realize I was getting a technology degree too well. <laughs> I'm learning all this stuff. So every time I log in, there's something new I have never done before. So here we go. Hey, Laura. Uh, yes. Um, it's Nick. Uh, so Supervisor Stork, he called in um, as an attendee using his okay. phone. So he's the sure. one call-in user on the phone right now. Sure. Let me... Um, Again. Supervisor Stork, are you there? Yes, I am. Okay, we can hear you. We're still waiting for two people to sign on, but if you want to go ahead and get started, that'd be okay. Um, I'm not sure what happened, but I, I, I've not had problems before with getting on WebEx, but it, it wouldn't let me get on as an attendee or as a participant. So, as a a panelist, so um, do you, I can't see who's there, but it, are most members of the committee are there and we can get started. Is that what you're suggesting? Yes, sir. We have, we have 2 people we're waiting on. Um, we're trying to get them connected right now. Okay, well, I'll just, I'll take just a couple minutes for everybody. 1st off, I wanted to thank uh, the advisory group for your work. It's, um, it's been a long road and a lot of effort I know that's gone into um, a process that started uh, really a couple of years ago and we're nearing the end of the process and that's why I wanted to speak with you at least briefly to, to I guess remind you of kind of where we've come from in the core of what we need to finish so that we can um, so that I and the community can fully understand where we are and then ultimately uh, if that gets brought forward to the planning commission, the board, then we can uh, reference the work that you all have done, as well as, and most importantly, the, the work that you are finishing tonight, which is the material that will be presented to the community that I'm looking for them to essentially provide their vote or their voice by property owner um, as to whether they are interested in or believe that um, this uh, historic overlay district should be implemented um, or if they don't. Um, but looking for their specific vote, if you will, on the package that then, if there's sufficient support, the Planning Commission and the Board of Supervisors would consider uh, ultimately uh, and make a determination as to whether a historic overlay district should be set up for the Holland Hills area. So. It's crucial really tonight that you all spend some time, uh, be comfortable and there'll be a consensus or at least strong support for whatever uh, materials that are going to be sent to the community uh, that the community can then look at, consider, and ultimately make a property owner by property owner decision as to whether or not uh, they would support a historic overlay district or not. So, Again, thank you very much for your time. I just wanted to kind of make it clear to you all that it's important that um, you finish really the work that you've been doing for so long with a package that has, uh, you know, a lot of support on the, your committee and ultimately the, the members of your community can understand that ultimately the core issue that we're asking them is whether they support 
the historic overlay district that this um, package will present to them or not. Um, if they do, and there's strong support for that, then there's likely to be support on the planning commission and the board to finish it. Um, if they don't, then there'll be other options or the matter may uh, end at that point in time. It'll be truly up to the community at that point as to the strength of support uh, for moving something forward. I don't know if there's any questions for me. I can't see anybody, so um, I'm gonna just be on for another few minutes and then I will be uh, moving on. I have another um, activity I need to be involved with now. May I ask a question at this point? Supervisor Stork? Sure. Uh, yes. The way, the way you've laid it out, uh, it sounds as if a, a, a majority vote would make the decision, whereas uh, I'm sure it's your experience that people who attend meetings are often representative of the far end of the bell curve on both sides. So how do you sort through that? Really, as I've been, and I very consistently have said this at all the meetings that I've previously attended at the advisory committee and as well as the initial conversations that I've had with many of you and, and the kind of comments I've made from the dais regarding the historic overlay district consideration, um, there needs to be substantial support of the community. And that's not just a, a majority plus one, it's substantial support. What that looks like, I think will be apparent when the votes are in, but I'm, I'm thinking it would be something above 60%. What that is, and I'm, it's not clear to me, but it's, it would have to be substantial support of the community to proceed. Well, the problem, of course, is that some people don't attend the meetings and the people who no, do No, this attend. isn't a matter of a meeting vote. No, this, and maybe I misunderstood your question. Um, the, the work that you're doing tonight, that just needs to be a consensus of the group, uh, which I would assume would be somewhere in, in the range of 60 or 70 percent or more. But the actual vote that I'm looking for and what will be presented in the survey that's going out to every single uh, property owner is a significant majority of the community that supports that. So that has nothing to do with whether you attend a meeting or, or never attended a meeting. It has to do with when you get this document, um, you as a property owner, you will make a decision and you will vote, you know, your support or non-support of, of this. And then those votes will be compiled. And uh, if there's significant support to proceed, then um, I would likely proceed. And, and if there's not, then um, we'll have to look at what, should, what if any next steps there should be. Well, thank you. I should have taken into account the fact that the voting will be done by proxy. No, it's not being done by proxy. I'm not following you, sir. Oh, every okay. household, every I mean, property. I think I'm worse, every, making myself worse. <laughs> it will be done every by Every property the owner. There's. There's some, I mean, um, Laura can tell you how many different households it'll go out to, but every single property owner, not one, not two, not 10, not 100, but every 100%, if you will. 493. Of the property owners, <laughs> one, thank you, Laura. 493, one, it, yeah. Oh, 493, sorry. 493 property owners are going to get what you all will be working and, and I assume mostly finishing tonight. I'll have the final word on it, but my expectation is I'll follow your recommendations. Um, each one of those households will get this survey. Each one of those households will be expected and will be hoping that they'll return that. And if there's significant majority of those households that support moving forward, then uh, that would be how this Brought, gets brought forward to the planning commission and ultimately to the board of supervisors. So there's no proxies in this at all. You know, you're either going to support it or you won't, or you won't respond. So it's, uh, there's no, um, there's not going to be any um, doubt about where folks stand. They'll either have voted uh, yes or no, or they won't have voted. Thank you. I understand, I understand now. Okay, great. 
And so the work you're doing tonight is important to make sure that that information gets conveyed properly and, and clearly. And, and that's really the core of what I'm hoping you all can can uh, complete this evening. Um, are there any other questions for Supervisor Stork? I know um, a couple signed on a little bit late. And Millie, I know you're um, calling in, so I can unmute you if you have any questions. Can you hear me? Hello? Hey. Hello? Hi, Millie. It's Laura. Can you hear um, me? I was, yes. I was trying to ask the supervisor a question. But yes, I, please go ahead. Going okay. Um, what I hear you describing, Supervisor, and I got in late because the system doesn't work, and I understand you had trouble too. Um, it's a lot of fun. Um, the way you're describing it, it sounds like it's a referendum, like you would vote on a bond issue. This is not a referendum. This is supposed to be a survey with multiple questions to lead people through understanding it. It's not a yes or it's not an up or down. The survey is not up or down. That's a referendum. Is that what you want? Because when we met, um, I didn't think that's what you wanted. I I would like to I would like to get some information from the community, but but Millie, the most important thing and the and the core of what's being done now is I need to know of the 493 uh, property owners here, um, how many of them support this and how many of them don't? And that's, in the end, the core question. It's not a matter of, of surveying and what would you like to do, what would you not like to do? It's a matter of with what's being presented with the work group, with the group work that this group has done, you know, and mm -hmm. the information that's compiled, positive, negative, pro, con, whatever it might be, that in the end, the property owner has provide us with their decision about what they would like to see done. So, but, yes, I'm interested in other information, but the core of it and the, frankly, the only thing that, that truly is essential from the, from the survey is that we understand in the end, do they support going forward with what the recommendations are or not? Oh, okay. Well, let's not call it a survey then, because it's not even remotely a survey the way that it's been posed. Um, it's not. I mean, that's just a joke. When you've been talking about a survey for a year and a half, that's going to happen in the community. Um, the CAAH folks have written something that is extremely biased to present it that's almost almost identical to what they wrote on the petition when they circulated it. And that, too, was a referendum, an up or down. Yes, you want it. No, you don't. And so this isn't a survey. As long as we're on the same page on that, um, you know, I guess I... Somehow misunderstood because I know what a survey um, looks like. I've written a lot of them. Well, the, the important thing is that what you're people understand is where they can go to get information that that reflects all the different considerations that um, that the committee um, has discussed, and and that there's a place that you can get information that is pro con. You know, has all the different perspectives that people should reasonably consider before they decide whether they support moving forward or not. Okay, but a well-written survey, well-written with 10 to 12 questions, um, would lead people to understanding because you're not gonna have, very few people outside maybe 20 people that I could name in the community would actually go to resource, all these resource documents and plod through them. Um, and it's just in human nature. You send them a survey that is fairly easy to understand and follow. They'll answer the questions and you'll, you can walk them through. And then at the end, you say, okay, do you want this or don't you want it? That's when you get your yay or nay, but at least you'll be getting information that will allow you to do the, use the judgment that we elected you to use in making an a informed decision on this. Because otherwise, it's nothing more than the petition all over again. It's like deja vu. I mean, if you look at the petition and the way it was worded and what they've written now, it's, just, it's almost the same. And I know I'm in a minority here, so there's no sense in pretending otherwise. No, Millie, your points are well taken. And um, I, I didn't have the information to send to a work group last week. So because we're going pretty quickly on this question effort referendum, but it does have some background information. I'd be happy to share that with you and follow up with some questions. 
um, after, but I'd like to at least present to you the questions and then the survey set up, or not a survey or, you know, the question to the community um, has set up and then we can talk further if we need more information because the, the way I think we have it set up is um, very helpful in finding the information you need to make that informed decision. Are you talking about something we've been sent to also? No. I don't no, you have not you have not received it yet because this is fresh off the fresh off the presses. Well, so and I'm on the phone. So I... Right. Okay. Yep. And I'm happy to send it to you, the draft to you once we're done, but we were finalizing it today. So I wasn't comfortable quite sending it out. Did you take early. into consideration the twelve questions I sent you and the definition of what a survey, mm -hmm. the type of survey mm -hmm. that should be done to reach attitudes yep. and Yep. Okay. Yep. All the questions were taken. Nothing is finalized tonight, um, but we're taking them all into consideration. Um, were there any other questions for Supervisor Stork before we let him go? Okay. All right. Thank you, Supervisor Stork. Appreciate your time. Okay, Laura. Sure. Appreciate it. Appreciate all your work. Thank you. Bye bye. Laura, I don't think I did this fast enough. Who is you're gonna have to identify this yourself if you're speaking. This is Lee Cutler. Hi, Lee. I don't think I did this fast enough. Okay. But did you have a question I, for Supervisor Stork? Well, I, I I I sort of have a, a question and a statement. Okay. Sure. Right. Um, I, just to clarify my understanding. Okay. Sure. So based on the petition, okay, that was sent to the supervisor. Um, and I have that in front of me that really doesn't give any information um, at all. So based on this petition, the supervisor determined that there was enough community support for moving forward with an HOD. And mm -hmm. I said, the answer is yes. Okay, now we, the working group, have remained in constant discussion for well over a year with poorly defined assumptions of benefits and limited discussions about homeowners' property rights and potential pitfalls. Open dialogue with homeowners has been removed from the table with staff presentations slash reports, okay, on the agendas distributed to the working group. That's my statement, if I understand this clearly. Um, the whole process or the the I'm I'm confused on what you're um I'm, you start I'm out with saying there's pretty much been no open dialogue with the community and the homeowners stakeholders. Um and what we've gotten are reports, uh we've gotten agendas that give us staff reports, okay, and presentations from uh affiliated groups, historical groups, etc. But there's been no real round table open discussion as yet with the working group or outside with the public that I'm aware of. Oh, well, I apologize that you feel that way. We've had a number of community meetings in the past. Uh, we've always been open to answering your questions. There was no facetiousness or trying to be not transparent. Um, the, it was always understood that staff would be making the final decision and taking the work group's um, um, comments into account. Um, but the final decision about the HOD, which is part of the reason we're doing the survey, is up to the Board of Supervisors. Um, and so that is the goal of the survey tonight. We're not rehashing any of the findings or determinations that we have made at this point. Um, those are all pretty much done. Um, at this point, we're getting, this is a request from the supervisor to put together this I'm not going to call it a survey, but the query to the community about their support or opposition of the historical relay district. Thank you very much. Thanks, Lee. Laura, if I could just interject something here, uh, you know, we also had a, uh, a meeting at the beginning of the process um, at the local school before COVID intervened, um, which was a community meeting. Lots of questions were answered at that point, and then, you know, during during COVID, I think in January or February, we had a very well attended Zoom meeting where that was open to the community and lots of people voiced their questions and so forth. So 
I guess I disagree with the with two prior statements that um, community members have not had a chance to voice their uh, opinions or seek further information. That's all. Thanks, Barbara. I think um, I don't think we're here to. This is um, the supervise this this query um, that we're talking about tonight as the supervisors. Um, request to get a formal kind of response from the community about whether or not they support it. Um, we have done the outreach we thought was appropriate um, to the community and to the work group. Um, and we have taken that. We have still have not published our staff report yet um, because the um, was not authorized, so we can't reveal those findings. Um, but you all are very well aware of and will be continued of all the kind of determinations that we're making. So if I could go ahead and get started, I know we're already a half hour in, so I'd like to go ahead and get started through the report and show, I'm sorry, through the agenda and show you kind of what we've got tonight. I'll kind of quickly go through some of the background information, but um, so we went through the roll call and the welcome, comments from Supervisor Stork. Um, we'll talk about the background information that we're gonna provide um, to the people that take the query and the process and talk about our questions. And then I'm going to give a brief overview of next steps, how long the survey is going to run, what that may mean when we need the survey responses back, and then discussion of the questions, and then doing a wrap up and adjournment. So, Kira, if you could go ahead and go to the next page, please, on the PowerPoint. Okay, so the updates. Um, we were anticipating um, that the authorization of the historic overlay district proposal um, and the advertise, advertisement of the public meetings is going to happen on July 13th. Um, however, Supervisor Stork um, deferred that item to gain this community input, input in the survey. So that's why it was not authorized um, on the 13th. Um, I will say the 13th authorization is an administrative board item only. It's not um, a public hearing per se, where um, the whole board, you know, takes public hearing and questions and concerns. It's really an administrative process to allow the zoning ordinance piece of this proposal um, to be scheduled for public hearing. And then the rest of the proposal all goes at the same time. So the pieces and the words we've thrown around the comprehensive plan amendment, the zoning ordinance, and the rezoning for the map and the boundary would all go be authorized at that time. Um, we continue to work on the staff report um, and we're pretty much almost complete with it. Um, and then once we get the authorization to move forward, if that happens, um, that's when the staff report would be published. Very next slide. Kira, next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so we met uh, internally in staff um, and brainstormed some questions with the supervisor's office about um, the intent of the survey, what we wanted it to be, um, and what questions um, we had um, that we wanted to present. Um, and the list that you got last week was the list of, I think it was five questions that we wanted to send out to the community um, from both staff and the supervisor's office. Um, so we are working with you all tonight to talk about the questions and the process, and then um, we'll take um, the comments on the draft questions and then review any questions and discuss. And thank you for everybody for submitting your questions and comments to me ahead of time. I have an Excel spreadsheet we'll kind of go through with the issues. And then we'll do a second round of internal staff review, make sure um, it's okay with different groups in our office. And then um, there'll be a hard copy mailing, um, which will include a QR code to link to an online survey and a hard copy of the survey. Um, and I'll go into a little bit more detail on that in the next slide. Yeah. Thank you. So um, the next steps would be to finalize the survey questions and create a mailing. And so this mailing is going to include an information background letter about what what these questions are, what we're hoping to get and the intent of them, a hard copy of a survey or query, whatever whatever the final questions are, and then a return envelope to return to us. 
So in that one envelope, there'll be a background with a QR code. So you can choose to take the survey or query online and or mail it back. However, only one, they'd be sending to each property owner. So there's 493 properties. They're being mailed out to each property owner. And so you'll have to put in your property address um, to respond to the survey and only one will count. So if you do it online, which we're encouraging, um, because it will limit the amount of um, background back um, back end input we might have to do, um, but we thought it was important to include the option of a hard copy mailing. So then we're also creating this website that Sarah Godfrey, our communications person, is going to talk about called Public Input. And the point of this website is to be able to scan that QR code with your phone and be able to go directly to the website. And so this website will have different tabs of information and, and Sarah's gonna go through it in very shortly, but it will give the map of the boundaries that we're proposing, the contributing and non-contributing properties, um, what those mean, definitions of those, um, the draft of the ordinance amendment, the draft of the comprehensive plan text, and also a link to the draft design guidelines. So all that information will be readily available from that QR code and those links will be readily available as well. So we're trying to consolidate all the information you might need to answer this survey query. And then once again, I really would like to emphasize responding back online if possible, but then obviously we're trying to make sure we get as many back as we can. So we'll be having an option to mail back a hard copy as well. Here, next page, please. Okay. And so Sarah, I'm gonna go ahead and introduce you if you would Turn your camera and or share your screen um, if you can, um, showing the public input kind of draft website, if that's okay. Sure. Okay, so I'm gonna Hello, give everyone. you I'm gonna give you um presentation. And then you should be able to share your website. So Sarah works with us in our communications group and public input is a relatively new um, platform that we've had an opportunity to work with that we think would be very, very helpful for this survey. Um, I will say every, almost everything and Sarah, correct me if I'm wrong, is customizable. So if we find something that we don't like or would rather change, um, we can definitely change that. So um, Sarah, if you could walk through us on the functionality of this, um, just a reminder, None of this is finalized. This is just kind of a snapshot of what it would look like, um, but we wanted to be able to show it to you um, for usability and then to show you where the kind of survey inquiry questions would be at the end. Yes, so I'll, I'll walk through. I would, yeah, we'll just emphasize that this is very much a rough draft as Laura was saying. So um, emphasis on rough and we can customize and switch out pretty much everything that you see on here. Um, and, uh, it is such a visual thing that it, we thought it would be helpful for, um, you all just to kind of see how it's laid out. So this is, you know, when you, uh, either scan the QR code or if you're on, you know, the county site and you go to take the survey, this is like the main page that, um, you would come to now the way that we've created this you will have to kind of scroll through in order to, to get to taking the survey, you will have to go through the various components that we're, that we're laying out to get that uh, background information. So to advance on, you will literally have to scroll down and click the continue button. Now you'll see we have some components here that, that we have not filled out yet, um, but you will have to scroll through all of all of this content um, in order to get to the survey portion, which I will open up now. So, um, and this bar at the top, you know, these tabs, we can cut this down. Uh, we can build out even more um, just to, to kind of clarify that. And, you know, it's, it's all um, customizable. So before you take the survey, there's some personal information we're asking for. Um, your name and address will be required and email address is optional. Um, and then we have an extra um, uh, button here in order to confirm that people would like to be signed up for updates. Um, now, let's see, 
you can see. Um, Laura, do you want me to walk through the actual questions or like talk through them or just scroll through? No, I would just give an example if you want to, because the questions are okay. not finalized yet. So at this yeah. point, just um, if you want to show the selector response and then the one that I think is the, the gradation between the two, I think that's sure. helpful. Sure. Laura, can you email me this PowerPoint since I can't see anything and nothing is making sense? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Sure. So, yes, yeah, so the first couple ones are yes, no questions, pretty self explanatory. And then the third question we have laid out is what is your view of the ARB approval requirement? Um, so, I was playing around with it earlier to see, but you should be able to, you will be able to slide to where you um, where you fit on the scale of you know negative to positive um, and that will be saved um, and then the final question we have is um, you know support for establishing an HOD um, and at the very end if there's any questions comments we have um, contact information for uh, respondents to put that information in as well. Um, but that is the gist of it. Um, we try to make it pretty intuitive. And yeah, I'm here to answer any questions. I'll pass, uh, if you want to pass the sharing back over to you, Laura, or keep this up. Um, if you could leave that up for just a second, okay. I just wanted to see. So please, um, no, no questions necessarily on content because we're still working on that. Um, but um, the just a um, heads up, if Sarah, if you go back up to this tabs so at the beginning, if you could scroll back up. Um, when we talked about, I emailed originally last week about doing some sort of white paper, and we had received some comments about we didn't want to have a separate document for people to kind of look at. So the whole point of this, these tabs, we're trying to give like um, an overall like brief paragraph of each of those parts. And so that you'd have the basic information that you would need to, to, to go ahead and complete the survey and query. So I'm really interested in getting some feedback about that, about what we should include as the tabs. I mean, I have the parts that I mentioned earlier, but I am interested in hearing that about what we think would be most helpful. Um, and I've gotten some feedback about an FAQ page, which we do have on there. Um, but also um, some other items on those. And once again, please don't comment about necessarily the setup, um, but if um, on the actual kind of, I'm sorry, comment on the setup, but not the actual um, details in, in the questions and things like that. So, um, and if you want to raise your hand, I know, or if you want to kind of pipe up or raise your hand, um, then um, there's a raise your hand function on the bottom of the screen. You might be able to do that, but Ron, I saw you raise your hand already, so you can go ahead. Uh, did you okay? My, my question is, how does no opinion uh, count in calculating whether or not there's community support? That's going to be a question for the supervisor's office once we get the data. Okay. Um, but but um, I, the the nice thing gotcha. about this public input is um that it creates some nice graphs and maps maps not maps but graphs for us um about the data comprehension and then we can manually add more that come in from hard copies but yes that's a that's, i'm not sure yet about how that's going to be okay barbara hey, i saw Laura. your hand next oh i'm sorry millie go ahead i'm still waiting to see what i'm looking what I, what everyone's talking about but i gather this is because i'm flying blind public input is that the link to the online survey, is that the tool that the yes. online survey yes. will ride? It? Okay. Yes. So that's yes. All right. So when someone scans their phone or decides they want to do the online survey, that's what they're going to get. And what I gather is you're going to have all the materials that you've com you've compiled that are just Fairfax County materials. Am I correct? That's correct. Okay. And you'll have you envision having a summary like a, a really brief executive summary of each tab. Is that correct? correct? Yes. So people can use the version for dummies if they want by just reading that paragraph. Correct. Right? Without digging into it. Okay. So this is the online survey. Well, we're not going to call it a survey because it's not a survey, but whatever you want to call it. Whatever know. we're calling it, this is, this is it. Yes. Right. 
and um, and uh, and a no opinion. I think that if someone goes through the trouble to answer the survey, I think no opinion is very relevant because that tells you people either don't care or don't understand it. So they don't have enough information or enough understanding of it or enough skin in the game to have an opinion. So I think it's I think it's important. And I think the supervisor will use his judgment to determine that. Right. That's I yeah, that's gonna comment. be his judgment call. Yep. Right. Sorry, Billy, did you have more? No, not for now. Okay. I, I just thought okay. you sent me to send. Thank you. Yeah, yes, I did. Sorry. I had it pulled up. I just didn't hit send. Um okay. Um Barbara, I think you were next. Barbara on mute, I think. Barbara, you're on mute, I think. One of the first things you have is the map of the contributing versus non-contributing houses. We've all been doing this for two years. We know what those terms mean. Please, you need to, to include right with that map. You know, it doesn't matter if your house is contributing or non-contributing. Your house is still within the historical district and will be subject to the rules of the historical district. And also give a definition so that people don't have an idea that somehow their house is off, you know, is, is you know, don't let this happen to me type of thing. So that it's just, it's a term of art. It means something. But that's all you need to know, uh, you know, so that people don't have a heart attack at the beginning of the process or don't understand and, and you know, um, either don't go any further or get a, a, a upset for, for nothing. So I think that upfront explanation of that issue is important. Thank you, Barbara. Okay, I, I, think I, agree. I agree with Barbara because non-contributing and contributing there's really no difference because if you're sucked into the hod regardless what difference does it make because you're surrounded by contributing factors so i think it's she, she's right you need to explain to people that it doesn't really matter if you're non-contributing you're not off the hook you're still in the hod and so they need to know that right. because some people uh, might look at that and say phew i'm not con i'm not contributing so i don't have right. to worry about this thing. Yep. Uh, thank you for those comments. What I was going to say is that map is honestly just a placeholder and Sarah went to one of our websites and copy and pasted it in there. So no fault of Sarah's, but thank you for that feedback. I think we're going to choose a more general map from that and or define contributing non contributing. Um, but um, there's a bunch of different maps that we have. That one's just the most prominent on our website right now. Um, and we can use, we have property ownership map, that type of thing. That's much more. Look, your properties in the district. This is what it means type thing instead of the pink and the green, which like you, I, I agree with all of you is that it doesn't really have much meaning when you're first looking at the map. Well, whereas if you just had a property boundary of or the boundary of the properties included, that would be much more helpful of am I in, yes. am I in or am I out that type of thing and, yeah, and the I definition of right. what the HOD means. So no, well taken understood. Thank you. I'm, I'm scrolling through trying to see if anybody else has questions. You can put them in the chat too. Mm -hmm. um, if you have trouble communicating with us, I think Jerry, you had a question or two. Um, just 1 quick question. Um, so, if you're a dinosaur, like me, and I do not use QR codes on my phone, but I would like to do the online survey. Is there a web link website link that we can use instead? Yes, we're going to send you to our Holland Hills plan amendment web page. Um, and that's going to be in the background letter. So that background letter is going to have the kind of three response options, if you will, of the QR code, um, the link to the plan amendment website, um, and then the link, you know, or you can go here, you know, giving you as many options as you can to the access to survey. Okay. Uh, and then the Great. hard Thanks. copy as well. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So, once again, I apologize. This is not as, as fleshed out as we had hoped it would be, but trying to get you the questions um, and get feedback as soon as we can. But hopefully this will um, assuage some of the comments that I got about making sure we have adequate information on here. Um, and I will send out um, hopefully 
at some point be able to send out a further draft of this so that you all can see it. Um, maybe not necessarily for comment, but at least for um, comprehension and awareness um, with that. So this is really your opportunity. Like you said, if we have an issue with that map at the beginning, that was a great comment. Um, but the the different tabs are going to be um, those pieces, like I said, and if you have more comments after, please feel free after tonight, please feel free to send them to me. But um, there's different tabs, as I said, are going to be required. And that's an important part that Sarah mentioned. I want to hone in on is that you have to, you're required to click through those tabs before you respond to the survey. So, even if you just scroll down and click continue, you don't read them. That's your prerogative, but you have to go to each of those tabs before you can. Can finish um, so. What do you mean you have to go to each of those tabs? Uh, let's say somebody doesn't, I don't click on staff summary. Will I not be able to vote? You have to, you have to click continue at the bottom of each page and it will let you go to the next one, but it won't let you go. Uh, you have to go to each one of them before you get to the survey. Um, so the goal was to, to tell people that. Because well, what, otherwise what's going to happen is people are going to think. Um, you know, this, this community is filled with a fair number of people who are not, let us say, the most computer savvy people in the world, right. myself included. I think you need to say in the directions, you have to click through each one of these tabs in order to get to the survey. Nope, that's a good point. Because otherwise okay, people are going to say, it didn't work, I couldn't vote, and they're just going to throw up their hands up. and go yep. away. Okay. And we don't get a second bite at the apple with these people. Well, that was um, continue. Uh, provide enough of a clue for the person to can to continue. Well, and, words, and this, yeah, yeah, you don't ahead, need an explanation that they're there's a tab you have to click on. If there's a word well, that says continue, then you know to continue. I think too, maybe Sarah, can we put the continue at the top of the page too? I don't know if there's an option for that. Um, you know what I mean? Uh, like have it at, yeah. at two places. I don't I'll know if there is. Just, I don't know if there's. <laughs> I will have to look into it. But I, yeah, I was thinking about adding a little explainer text with this header that's you know the same on every page that just says you know scroll through and click the continue button to advance um, through the, the tabs below and take the survey or, you know, something along those lines, we can work with it, but yeah. Okay. Can, Cause you're if I can move the continue well button up, I will, I will do that, but. Um, but then it kind of defeats the purpose of us asking people to read through the it, whole. It does. Cause we do want them, okay. we want them to have to scroll, right? To at least see what information, even if they're just glancing at Scrolling it. Scrolling through the page, <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, but that's to, that's a good point, Barbara. Is that when you have to scroll, right? The continue button isn't as obvious, you know, because it's at the bottom of the page. So if you get kind of stuck, um, but yeah, maybe say if we put just that explainer text at the beginning, um, a little user friendly um, direction. Um, uh, Laura. Yes, Laura. So Millie. This is Millie. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so. I, I was having a little trouble hearing when you were going through the process of, of when everything was going to happen, but basically there'll be one more community meeting, correct? Not, we hadn't really discussed that at this point. Um, oh, we um, I, weren't ante anticipating to have another one. Right. That's what I thought. That's what Stork had told me. But if, um, so is the county the only authorized source of information on how an HOD works and and how it's going to work by the county and the ARB? Are, do you yes. all envision that you are the ultimate source and the final word on that? Um, of how it um, goes through the process? So how the HOD yeah, would be how it, how, it, how it would operate, what it means, and yes. how it would operate. Yes. Because, I mean, there could be a lot of misinformation out there potentially. Right. Right. Okay. There's, um, yes, we had some FAQs that Sarah had put in there. If you go to the FAQ tab, we can have more. Um, this is, it's difficult because it's such a complicated process and we're trying to get this snapshot after three years of whether or not people. And so I'm anticipating too, we're going to get a ton of questions after this and rightfully so. 
um, about what what does this mean and this is the first time I've heard of it and you know that type of thing because you know there's new as, as I got in your comments and heard loud and clear there's new people in the neighborhood this is an update that type of thing um, we hadn't talked about a community meeting but um, I need to discuss further with a supervisor about if we need to have one um, but um, I'm, I was hoping and um, with this kind of setup to you all for you to be able to see this information and, this, and the information we're going to put on here. Um, but I'm happy to, I think I've got a chat. Um, I'm happy to, um, um, I'm happy to kind of field that question. That was one of my discussion issues for tonight, but let's go ahead and keep going. I know we've got a lot to go through, but were there any more questions or comments on um, public, public input? Um, I'm happy to send, we have this kind of dummy link to the website that um, Sarah, can I share that with everybody just so they can see it? Okay. And then um, you all can kind of look through it and click through and you can kind of test it, if you will. Um, and none of the links will really count at this point, but so you could see what it would look like and um, kind of spread the word about this user, um, this, this survey that's coming. I wouldn't share the link, but I, you can spread the word about this public input website. I think that would, would help people be aware of that term and that's the format that we're going to be using for the when, when's, your target, when's your target date for getting this out, Laura? I probably missed it when I was trying to get in. No, you didn't meeting. miss it. You didn't miss it. We're still going. Oh. Um, you didn't miss okay. it yet. We're looking for September 7th through September 30th. Um, that's what we okay. kind of landed on. So we need to, um, and that's like the soonest we're going to be able to get it out because we need to be able to get these mailings out to everybody, get the information out, get the questions finalized, and get the website together in the next, by the end of August. So um, we've got have a lot you, of work Have to you do. considered, have you considered, I mean, there's been a lot of talk on our forum about people not getting mail for days on end or weeks mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. not at all, um, snail mail. And I know you're, you've got to use it. Is there any other way that you um, are planning to try to communicate to people that it, it's out there? Or are you going to put it on your website or? Yes. Yeah, we're going to, okay. um, I'm going to work with Nick on this a little bit further about broadcasting it a little bit further. Um, but yes, we will. Um, we talked about creating this awareness campaign before the 7th of, you know, this race starting the 7th, please be on the lookout for mail and or the survey will go live on the 7th. So if you get, if you want to go on the survey on the 7th, you should be able to click the link and, and do the survey on the 7th, if, even if you don't get the hard copy yet. Um, but this is just another way we're trying to make sure we get to people. But I hear you loud and clear about the mail being delayed. So um, we're trying to get out it as soon as we can. Yeah, and I'm sure they'll put it on the on, on the newsletter at Storkville. Yep. Yep. That's yeah, cool. that's correct. We'll push it out on our social media channels and put it out through our newsletter and other e blasts and whatnot. Cool. Laura. Hey. This, yes. This is Bob Kinzer. Hi, Bob. Hi. Right. Uh, question about security. I suppose these days it's relevant. Uh, are they going to mail this just to homeowners and how are you going to verify that it's homeowners that are actually responding? So we're only mailing it to um, property owners and the property owners are listed in the Department of Tax Administration. That's how we get our mailing addresses for the neighborhood. So it won't be anybody that's renting or temporarily living on the property. It should be the property, actual property owners as listed in tax records. So if they live in California and own it, they'll get <laughs> you'll get a copy of the survey in California. Um, but that's that's how we're trying to um, make sure so how, that how, many... how does that feed through the uh, online process? Right. So the, the goal was is that at the very beginning where Sarah had up your name and address, once you put your name and address in, that's your kind of code for, for coming in. So your address is your unique identifier. So you can only vote one time per address. Okay. Um, so if, if we get multiple, um, we're going to go with the first one that we get or whatever, you know, however, we'll figure out how to do those discrepancies. But um, that was that was kind of hopefully the um, a specific uh, identifier. So we would get okay. one, one. So it's really and that would be in the information letter too. It is one vote per address. It's not one vote per person, if that makes sense. Yeah, thank That's you. That's the property address, right? Yes, correct. Yes, correct. Okay. The property owner address. Yeah, the property owner. No, no, I meant is it the property address like on Stafford Road or is it California? 
if they own a property on Stafford Road. You if said they the own the property the on identified. Stafford Road. Yes, but it's, be it's, it's, it would be the street address. Yeah, it should be street address on Colin Hills. Maybe Sarah, we can make that correct or street address or property ownership ad or something like that that makes it um, make sure that it's clear that it's not their address in California. Thank you, Millie. Um, mm -hmm. That we want to get the address on Stafford. Okay. That's an easy fix. Sure, it's property in Holland Hills. But there are people about who live in homes and they're renters, and the right. owner lives in California. So right. you would want to send the letter to the person who's paying the taxes, who, the, the property owner that's paying the taxes, not to the renter. Correct. Right. Okay. But we want to we want to figure out what property they own that they own in Holland Hills. Does that make sense? So if somebody in Stafford lives in California, uh, Stafford Road lives in California, we want them to put the Stafford address in here and not their personal address in California. But if, if they may be renting the house to somebody on Stafford. Correct. Um, and if they're and if their mail is going to staff is going to California. That's where, you know, that's where they expect to receive mail. And that's where that's going to go. That it's it's going to be and, and this and it shouldn't say street address. It should say property owned in Holland Hill or something like that. Street address of property owned in Holland Hills or something like that. It's not going to be it's going to get sent to their California address because they own the property according to our tax records. Okay. And they're going to have the vote. Not the renters it's or the leasers or anybody like that. It's, they're going to have the vote. Laura, Laura, not to belabor this, but and Barbara raises something that made me think of something, which is sure. if you put the Nick is going to put this out online and in social media and everything to go to this website and do this and so on, take the survey. Um, what's stopping renters from going on and putting the property address in there? There's got to be I some sort of security match. thing, There's like Bob Ray. Yeah, there's a um, and Sarah and I can work on this a little bit further, but we have the list of addresses and so we might be able to match the, the name with the, ad, you know, ad, for some sort of verification. I don't know exactly, um, but, but I understand your point of that um, of somehow matching the property owner's address with the street address. Um, and Sarah, I don't know how we have that usability on the back end, but maybe it's something we can filter through. Um, yeah, what there's a way we can point? we can take a look at that and there's a way to manipulate the data so we can see all of the responses for, you know, like uh, organize it by address. So then we can see which if there's any duplicates, um, but this conversation is making me think, you know, at the top, we can also put um, a little like, just clarify that there's 1 survey response per property. Um, we can share that up here too. And um, as you were saying, I can update this street address um, add some clarification for that as well. So, yep. Jerry, yeah. Um, so I don't expect there's gonna be a low turnout for this um, survey, but um, if there was, would you be thinking about going back to the people who haven't responded at any? Like, if you only got 50% and the supervisor stork really wanted to know that at least, you know, 75% of the neighborhood responded, is there something you would do about that? Um, that's going to have to be a conversation with uh, the supervisor. I obviously can't answer that question right now. I just don't know how much we're going to get. Um, right. But I think we'll, we'll wait and see. We'll wait and see um, what we get. Um, and then, and that's why. If we do the survey in September, and I'll talk a little bit about this later too, is once we get to October, we'll do the analysis then, see what we get, what numbers we have. And then if we need more or not more votes, but if we need more outreach and or it's not what we determined, we'll we'll take next steps then. But that's going to have to be an internal conversation um, once we get there. Okay. Um, so. Uh, if there's any more questions on public input, if you would, wouldn't mind emailing them to me and CCing Nick 
um, so that we both have them. And then um, I'll coordinate with Sarah kind of on um, um, upgrade of this. Um, I will send this out. So is there like a dummy email you can send to me or the dummy or the dummy, the draft website link that you can send to me that I can share with sure. the work group? I would just ask that you don't share this with other people because I don't want to, them to get confused with the surveys versus the real one. Um, so um, I would just make that caveat. We don't want to um, <laughs> confuse people like this is the real survey uh, and then have that as an issue. Um, further. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for your comments on that. Once again, uh, apologize. We're, we're at the very, very beginning of this. And um, still working towards that, but um, yes, Barbara. You're muted, Barbara. How long will people have? Are you going to put in there? You must respond by within 30 days or by a date certain. Yes, uh, the, the, my expectation is that the survey will be live on September 7th and it will be taken down on September 30th. So you will be asked to respond by September 30th. Okay. Um, just so we can have a hard end to it so that we can do the analysis we need to do. Yeah. All right, Kira, I'm gonna send the PowerPoint back to you or presenter back to you. Thank you, Sarah, for um, presenting that to us and walking through that. No problem. I think that's gonna be a really, really helpful tool um, for us with the survey um, the query. Okay, great. All right, Carrie, if you go to the next um, slide. Okay, so here's the next steps. Millie, you did not miss it. Um, September 30th through, I'm sorry, September 7th through September 30th gives about three and a half weeks to get those comments going. We thought after Labor Day would probably be the best time to start. Hopefully people are, I don't know what schedule we're gonna be on, but some schedule. Um, and then the survey will close on the 30th. And then, as I mentioned earlier, we'll analyze the results of the survey. Um, and then if we are to, if the supervisor decides to move forward with the potential HOD, we will reschedule that authorization that was previously planned for July 13th. And once again, what that will do is um, um, authorize the zoning ordinance administration um, amendment, as well as the rezoning and comprehensive plan amendment, and then set up those planning and board dates. Um, and we're hoping those will be relatively shortly after that, like, uh, I want to say maybe a month or a month and a half if that authorization gets scheduled. So we're looking at maybe winter, spring um, for those PC and board hearings, if all goes um, well. All right, next slide, Kira. Okay, so I'm not going to actually go through these. These are just, um, if somebody doesn't have the questions in front of them, here, I'm going to steal the presenter mode from you. Um, and I wanted to go through some of the questions that we had by topic. Um, uh, just see what we've got here. So let me share my screen. I apologize. I'm on one screen tonight. Shout out to my in logs again for putting me up while uh, power's out. Okay. Can you all see that? So yes. Okay, great. See what? What are we looking at? I'm um, sorry, we're looking at the draft questions. Um, are they the same ones that are in the, yep. the PowerPoint that Sarah just did? Um, yeah, yep. Okay. All right, I've got that. Yep, and then I'm going to pull up and Millie, I'll send you these two. Um, this is the, um, I, I do the matrix of the survey questions that we got. All right, so Kira or Grace or my staff, one of you is going to have to call out to me because I don't have anybody on my screen anymore. <laughs> So to call out to me if somebody's waving practically in the background. I can keep I can keep an eye on the chat and see if anyone raises their hand. Okay, great. Thank you, Kara. Just just pop in and interrupt me if we need to. Um, so I want to go into some of these questions um, and some of the discussion for the methodology of how we got to these questions. Um, as Supervisor Stork, and I wanted to reiterate this, is that he's looking for um, of the 493 property owners, how many are support and how many of them do not support the historic overlay district proposal. So with that in mind, we went back and forth of internally about what questions to include um, 
where we were, what we were trying to get out of this survey referendum query, whatever, whatever you'd like to call it. Um, but to figure out how, how we get there and get the answers that we needed. So, um, the question that came, the, the big thing that came out was 1, as I mentioned before, the yes, no, or no response on the historic overlay district. And that we really weren't looking for, um, uh, votes on, do you support the zoning ordinance amendment? Do you support the comprehensive plan amendment? Um, the goal was, and as now that you've seen through public input, each of those tabs, there'd be a paragraph explaining kind of what that was, how it related to the process, and then that language for, for your consideration with the proposal. So with that in mind, I think it gives a little bit of different view on these questions now, and I hope that you all kind of agree with that. But I did want to go through some of them one by at least the five questions we have, and we have some other questions that, that people sent in that I want to make sure that um, everybody has this. And Kira or Grace, could one of you email Kira? Could you email Millie the um, Excel spreadsheet? So she sure can thing. see it as well. Sorry, can't do everything at once. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, so um, I got a couple of questions from Ron and um, Lee about the questions, introduction to the survey, the pair, the background information, um, and we'll go through kind of writing that information, the background, um, the comments that you've had. Um, and the big one that came out of that that I want to mention is um, reflecting the covenant and the purpose of the survey and that um, the county um, and Millie made the comment of a disclaimer, you know, saying that the county does not um, impact covenant seeds restrictions, that type of thing. So it's very clear at the beginning. So all of that will go into that background information that you have on, on those tabs and won't necessarily go into these specific survey questions. So with that said, I really want to get into the meat of the questions um, so that we yeah. can kind of, yes, words make them. Um, yes, I, go ahead, Millie. Can I interrupt briefly? Um, sure. I really think it's important in case people do figure out all they have to do is scroll down and go continue, 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 and never really look at the materials, um, mm -hmm. which would be foolish, but people will do it. Um, right. I really think your disclaimer needs to be on top of the survey because that's what people will look at. They're going to do the survey. That's why they're there. So the disclaimer okay. shouldn't be missed. Just my point. So we'll, we should put the disclaimer on the top of each page, like right near where um, we have. Oh, you want to, I, mean, I hear what you're saying. You want it at the very, like before question one. I see. Okay. Correct. Got it. Correct. Got it. Thank you. Okay, so Millie, you can't see this, but I'm, I have a word document up that I'm going to just write and take notes in just because it's easiest and everybody can see what I'm working on. Hey, Laura, it looks like Mary has her uh, hand up. Okay. Hi, Mary, go ahead. Might have to. Mary, unmute. you're muted. Where are you asking from? Mary, yeah, Mary, you were muted. Oh, okay, yeah. I, 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 I finally found the, the uh, little hand up thing. Um, I do think it's important uh, because if people are doing the survey, they have to know what the the uh, guidelines are. Um, and that, that really ought to be spelled out so they can understand what is in there and what isn't in there. Uh, yes, because, because yeah. that that's very key to what, uh, you know, if you're going to sign on something and maybe somebody doesn't doesn't want it or does want it. But I think that's very important to do. Yeah, I think we're planning to put the design guidelines as one of those tabs um, to give an overview of the design guidelines and what well, they I, I think to that. I think I think if you could sort of, sort of put some of the major ones just uh, I mean, the problem with the tabs, as I said, when I tried to open the. Um, you know, the houses that were non conforming, it, it took me t over 10 minutes to get the damn thing open. So people aren't going to spend a lot of time doing that. So there ought to be some, some important, some major things that are in there and then maybe a reference to the tab, but you can't, the problem is this doesn't get into any of the details about what's going to happen. Well, maybe we'll give an overview of the main changes, if that makes sense, like building permit, you know, that type of thing, what, you know, what we discussed. Um, and, and we can give an overview of the design guidelines and then the link. Would that be um, 
sufficient? I, I think that, I think that would be that would okay. be good. And then with a link to that, because then then people would, would have a better idea of what they're looking at. Um, okay. And and uh, I did look at the um, the uh, architectural <laughs> review board meeting, and there was a request, you know, about the things of these things that there ought to be an explanation on. Uh, the, like when the list of non-conforming, there ought to be an ex explanation of why these things were added or why they were on there. Okay. In the first place. Yep, and there is. We have that. We have that made. Just don't have it. Okay. I need to Thank finalize you. it. Thanks. Okay. Okay. So I made a different. The tabs is the tabs for public input. Sorry, just to. So if you think of any more tabs you think that might be helpful, uh, the last tab will be the survey. Um, any, anybody else? Um, got, if we want to just go into the first question, um, we can start talking about that. Um, so the first question was, um, we were going to have, and I, once, once again, I sent you all that we were going to do this white paper and this is going to be the title of the white paper, but now that we don't have this white paper, I think this question is kind of a moot point um, specifically because um, we're requiring you to go through each of those tabs <laughs> to get to the survey. Um, is everyone in general um, agreement with that or have any comments on that? Um, I think public input hopefully requires you to at least do some looking at. I don't see why you need question number one with the way you're setting up that you have to go through the tabs. Okay. Question number one, I don't think serves any purpose, um, nor does question number two. Okay, let's what, we'll just do one question at a time. Is anyone, does, I'm sorry, Millie. No, I was just pointing out, if it's a survey, it's not a one question deal. Right, so I agree that, um, we don't necessarily need the first one because we sent the questions before we really kind of set up public input. So I think the first one, I think hopefully most people agree on. Um, yes. But if that's okay. And then question two, the intent of that question was to, um, if you haven't, um, all the, and we can say this too is, you know, all the videos are posted online. We can post them somewhere on the FAQs. You know, if you want to watch previous meetings or work group meetings or whatnot. Um, they're all available on the plan amendment website, but the goal was to try to get, see if people had had even, um, well, for like been, pay, been paying attention, you know, that, that type of thing or been engaged previously. Um, but um, that was kind of the intent behind that question. May I ask a question? What is going to be done with these responses to the questions? How does that bear on the, the, the person's choice of uh, yes or no or no opinion. Um, this this is this once again back to the intent of this is for the supervisor to make his determination to whether or not to move forward on this. But that doesn't really explain it. And if you uh, explain it, I'll I'll be able to say, oh, I get it now, but I don't quite get it. Um. Once again, the intent of the question was that. If you've watched or attended any previous meetings to see if you've been engaged the entire time, or is if this the first time that you have seen this? Um, and, and, and that's the surprise factor. Um, but if we don't feel the question is relevant, we can strike it. It's just, you know, these are the ones we kind of thought might be helpful. Well, I uh, think, I, excuse me. It's just a question of what are you going to do with it? And right. if he specifically asked for that, or he sees the wisdom of ask, asking that, but then is simply going to look at whether or not a substantial number of people approved or disapproved, how does that bring this to a conclusion? That's up to the supervisor, to be completely honest. Um, if he wants that information, that's what we we're kind of looking for. Um, we wanted to have a more comprehensive survey than just one question, um, but that's what we're here for. And I can make a comment um, and we can discuss that further. Thanks, Ron, for that comment. Does anyone else? Um... Yeah, Laura, 
I, I agree. Millie. Oh, sorry. Okay, Barbara. All right, thanks. Millie, go ahead. I gave you 12 well written questions yeah. knowing how to write a survey, and mm -hmm. I don't see any of them on here. And because I hear people wanting to eliminate more and more questions so that it becomes a, a referendum up or down. Um, and I heard what the supervisor said, frankly, I was surprised, but because he's been talking for two years about a, a, a community and neighborhood survey to find out how people feel. And the right. questions I wrote were directed at getting at what people know, what people intend to do, what right. their attitudes. It, it should have been an attitude survey, an attitudinal survey that will draw them to a conclusion at the end. Right. Um, whether they're, they're, you know, whether they're comfortable making decisions about their property or they want somebody else to make them. Um, right. And, and no. ask questions about the DRC, which, which I hear other folks on the working group very concerned about the role of the DRC and wanting that addressed. So, Millie, I, mean, I have, I have all your address. questions included in here. I just went through um, on the Excel sheet that I just sent you. I just haven't gotten through them yet. So I just included them by order of the comments that I got. So you're just okay. I see, I see them, them on today. here. I just don't see them on the survey. Okay. Yes, that's yeah. They're All for right, discussion. Thank, thank yeah, I, I, I I'd like to make a suggestion on that question. Maybe just say, you know, uh, did you attend a meeting? Uh, would would you be interested in attending a meeting now? You know, because they might. I mean, they might be prompted into this stuff to get more more information. That might be that might be worth worthwhile. And do you want that as two separate questions? You know, because um, did you attend the meeting? And because uh, then I wouldn't know if people wanted to have another meeting. If well, not, I just I, I just say, or or you know, if you didn't attend, uh, would you be interested in 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 another meeting to clarify some of the questions you might have? Period. Okay. That that would be that would that could be figured out. You know, before it goes to a public hearing in front of the Board of Supervisors, which very few people are going to go to anyway. Great, oh, that's a great idea. Okay, so we have the survey and then after the survey was complete, if we feel like we need to have another yeah. community meeting. I, I, I think that, that might, I mean, I think you might get some in, people interested, but they probably need some more clarification because it's going to be very hard to read all these attachments and understand what's going on. Understood. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Mary. Um, okay, um, so maybe we pivot on that to um, focus on a, a, have possibly another meeting or the need for another meeting. Um, but to Ron's point, going back to does this get to our end goal? Um, that would, would at least provide us another t um, point of information on whether another community meeting is needed. So thank you for suggesting that, Mary. We'll definitely keep it in here for discussion with the supervisor. Okay. Um, question number three, I know a lot of people had questions on this one. Um, let me see, let me see what questions were on here. Um, Barbara, thank you for your note on the questions three and four, give the impression that the ARB is not an integral part what is the result? Um, so the, the ARB is part and parcel of the historic overlay district adoption. You can't have one without the other. Um, so um, I did get some recommendations on that wording, um, but did anyone have any specific comments um, on, I think Ron, you gave me a sentence and I apologize, I didn't put it in here. Um, But the but the needs to be clear that the ARB um, approves building permits. Is that right? Does the ARB have have rights as outside of the historic overlay district when they're doing? I think they do, don't they? For for they do. Um, so they so do, I but think that, that's a little bit permits. confusing. Um, you know, I mean, if they have that right anyway, whether or not it's but, a, not, but not for building permits specifically. So they only have purview over building permits um, within historic overlay district boundaries or expressly given to on like an easement or something like that. 
So it's only within those boundaries. I, th I think my comment uh, was that as written, it's implied that a building permit is uh, required, but I thought it should be more explicit simply because of the uh, comments that I've heard from people. One of their first focus is whether or not, you know, does it apply to everything that I do to my property? That's it's simply a matter of emphasis. If you don't feel it's necessary, okay, but um, that's the way I was looking at it. I would agree. I I would agree with Ron. You, you really need if you're going to ask this question, then you need to make clear that the ARB only becomes involved if an individual is needs a building permit to make a change to the exterior of their building. Yes. Laura, how do the guidelines, all the guidelines that had had all these these things in them about landscaping and hardscaping and all this stuff that for the HOD. You don't need a building How permit do... to do any of those things. Those are I, suggestions. I, I was asking. I was asking Laura. Excuse me. The oh. um, the the there's only certain things that require building permits. Um, so and that's why we called out in this question. I'm sorry, you can't see it. Um, this question about decks, examples, decks, demolitions. Um. Exterior renovations, you know, that's why we had put certain exterior renovations. But if it, if it rises to the level of a building permit in a historic overlay district, then it's going to come to us. And um, to your point, um, a lot of the uh, to Barbara's um, comment, a lot of those um, landscaping items do not necessarily require a building permit. So if you're putting in a retaining wall, yes, that does require a building permit. But if you're just modifying your landscape, your gardening beds or something like that, that does not require a building permit. Um, the other thing that gets triggered here, but it's not going to happen as often is if you're disturbing more than 2,500 square feet, that would require A or B review, but 90% of the cases in the historic overlay district are going to be for the building permits um, because 2,500 square feet is like Putting in a new pool and an addition, like it's 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 <laughs> some of the properties aren't even twenty five hundred square feet. Um, but isn't um, the uh, isn't the question that Millie asked uh, an example of why we need to make it very explicit in any question yeah. that a building permit is required? You know, it, to invoke uh, ARB jurisdiction. Well, and, and, and so the guidelines don't have any teeth. They're just guidelines. Correct. It's like the DRC, it's guidelines, right? So, and, you know, you can listen to them or not. So that's what that's what's kind of interesting that they're in there at all, because if they're not, if they don't rise to the ARB and therefore they don't have enforcement authority because it's not a permit, then they're just in there to, to kind of tell people what would be nice for them to do. Is that correct? So the ARB can does have approval. It has approval review. So if the ARB denies the application, it gets stopped. Um, and the ARB, and this is where it gets a little confusing. The ARB is not the issuing authority of the building permit. That's land design and, and building permit group or land design group. But the ARB has to approve it before the building permit can move forward. And if they deny it, then you would appeal, then you could appeal that decision. So they are not the approval authority, but they are kind of a gatekeeper, if you will, um, of that. Does that make sense? Well, I, I think, but I, I think it was kind of clear as mud. Um, what I was <laughs> trying to say is the guidelines, the guidelines are guidelines. If you look up the definition of guidelines. Right. So, and and so if if someone is looking at the guidelines but doesn't and says oh, oh okay that's interesting and i'll try to do that and i'm within that and they don't make an application to the arb because they don't need a building permit and they mm -hmm. just do their thing what is this arb so the arb has enforcement ability over someone if they find out that someone's doing something that may not be to their liking is that what you're saying only only if there's a building permit involved Okay, so, so that's the, the trigger that's, is the building. We're going around in circles. 
yeah. and I should understand this after two years, but um, so if so, the ARB has to approve a project that would require a building permit before that project can get a building permit. Correct. Okay. Correct. So if a building so permit is not, let me, not let me in the mix. Explain it different with the ARB. If the per building permits in a historic overlay district, it comes to staff and staff says, does it need to go to the ARB? Yes or no for various reasons. And if the answer is yes, it has to go to the ARB. The ARB writes a, a letter after um, if it gets approved saying to the building permit people, this has been approved. Um, and then they can move forward on the building permit. If it's been denied, the building permit does not get issued. Um, because it's like a, like I said, it's like a gatekeeper. It's not the final approval authority of the building permit. It's a reviewer that has a little bit more teeth um, than um, another reviewer, if that makes sense. Um, but but the, you are correct. If it doesn't require a building permit, the A or B would not be able to comment on it unless it like it comes in as like a secondary item. Um, so it really is just that building permit that triggers it. Got it. Or if somebody's going to tear down a house, do they need a building permit? Yes, they do. They, it's a demolition. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they would come to you first, and you would Correct. say to them, "You need to go to, to the, the ARB." ARB. Yep. So then they probably come that, to the ARB. Um, they probably come to the ARB for the demo permit and the new construction. And once they do that, they're done, right? They don't have to do anything else. They can't With be the stopped. ARB, yes. Once if, the if ARB, ARB grants approval and the, and says yes, you can have a building permit, and then the county issues the building permit, then they're good to go, and no one can stop them. No one has the authority oh. to stop. Them. No, no. There, there are other um, review agencies that could say your engineering, you know, doesn't matter. You know, your engineering oh. doesn't make sense. I, no, for the I, building. I, I hear you, Laura. I hear you. Oh, okay, but okay. I'm talking. She I'm not means talking just about the DR. I'm, could I'm, the DRC stop I'm them? Speaking. I am still speaking. I am saying that the county may have other departments that say, oh, wait a minute, your engineering is not solid. You got to do this. Yes. But, yeah. but it's the county that gives the final and absolute approval to move forward on a project. And therefore, that private individual can is good to go, right? No. Um, it, the county does not enforce the deed and covenants. So that's another potential review right. hoop they'd have to jump through. if. But, but it's separately from the county. So the building permit is separate from, I'm sorry, the, the, the DRC review is separate from the county review. Well, and, and not required. And uh, not appeals required. can also be made. Right. Appeals can be made too, if, if yeah, if, if that happens, if you don't agree with the decision or things like that. But, but just, and I know it's gonna come up again, but the, the, the issue is that the, the, the the DRC um, is a separate process from the county's ARB process and the building permit process. So you would have to, as a homeowner, you would have to make sure um, that you're following the county process because that's what we're here tonight to talk about. But the DRC is a separate issue, and you need you, you need to look at those regulations, of which I'm not going to go into. But there are two separate processes. Um, we in the county cannot require you to to follow the deeds and covenants. Um, but if there is one, we would recommend that you know, we, we recommend that you talk to your homeowner association every time, even outside of Holland Hill, so that you're not, you know, in violation of that. Yeah. Um, Except so. Holland Hills is not a homeowners association. Right. I mean, whatever overarching umbrella or organiz neighborhood organization you may have that that you work with. So okay. Um I will I will Finesse this question a little bit more. Does anyone have um, um, further thoughts on this question? But the, the, the thought, uh, if I could just go back and summarize, if a building permit is required in the Holland Hills HOD, the A or B will review and approve. Will review and approve a proposal before issuance of a building permit for certain exterior renovations, construction, demolitions to ensure the recommendations um, in the design guidelines are being followed. So once again, um, I, I would say um, in harm, how about 
do my comprehensive plan language right in here. Harmony with the recommendations in the historic overlay district design guidelines. Millie, that softens it up a little bit because they're recommendations. Okay. And then we thought it was important to put those examples in here of the decks, screened in porches, and buildings addition, building additions so people would know. But hopefully, I mean, once again, this is not the be all end all of building permit. People had a question before they finished the survey. Hopefully, they would be at the FAQs, calling Nick or myself, reaching out to you all um, that we can provide them more information. Um, so that's 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 the goal. Um, did anybody have any um, comments about the gradation between these two? About positive, negative, no opinion. Um, hey, Laura, it's Andy. Real quick question. Hey, Andy. Um, where you put first mentioned the ARB in that question? Mm -hmm. this is, um, the county's ARB. So for people that might not sure in the ARB versus DRC versus right, gotcha. HOD, just in case. Thank you. That's a good comment. Thank you. Am I on? This is Lee Cutler. Hi, Lee. Hi. Um, yes, I, I can hear you. I want to throw one thing out um, regarding number three. That's what we're talking about before we move on, sure. right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, in some uh instances you know this the, the, getting a permit will require some continual or additional negotiation between the arb and the homeowner which would mm -hmm. require personal attendance or a personal appearance and mm -hmm. you know I, nowhere in these questions does it spill the beans that so you might have to take a trip over to the county you might have to have a one-on-one -on -one meeting if you want to do something you know that's not flat out going to be automatically approved and mm -hmm. that's information that people should know. They may have to go to the county. They may have to, you know, negotiate. Um, and I was hoping to go to more than one. <laughs> I was hoping to put that question and information under one of the tabs about ARB processes, um, so that people would know um, expectations. You know, submitting an application. You know, that type of thing. Um, how long it would take. Um, what's required. So it's going to be like a quiz at the end. Um, uh, but I hear your point. Um, uh, I think it opens a whole new window of awareness for a person. That, oh, wait a minute. I may have to get really involved in this. I, yeah, for the, for the detail amount of, of mm -hmm. yes, for the submission and coordination. Um, Laura. Yes. I'd like to point out that they can send a representative like their contractor or their architect. They don't have to, the applicant doesn't have to come in person. Right. But, thanks, but that, thanks. that's still, that's still extra steps, extra money. Um, I, yeah. you know, letting people know that, that they might have to make an appearance or they might have to pay for somebody to appear. That can snap a knot in somebody's awareness and make them really pay better attention to what's going on here. Right. And I, I think that's, uh, duly noted and a good point because of the fact that there is this extra review and it's not just submitting to the county and I can, you know, heritage resources staff can sign off on it. It's going to be, right. um, you have to come to a meeting, you have to submit your materials two weeks ahead of time, that type of thing. Um, I know we're over time, so I apologize. So I'm willing to stay if everybody else is willing to stay because I'd like to get through these questions tonight to make sure we have um, these comments and questions tonight. So I want to make sure and I apologize. I probably should have made it till 830 at the very least, but. Um, but thank you um, uh, Lee for that comment. I will, I will, if that's okay with you, I'm going to put those in the tab and I'm wondering if we can. Uh, hyperlink some of those tabs or information so we can toggle back and forth or something like, or open it a separate window so you can see it. So you could have it like up next to each other or something like that. Sarah, I don't know if you're still on. Uh, um, yeah, that's I a really good idea. I think Laura. that's possible. That's a good idea because, because someone might have skimmed through it and then they get to these questions. They're like, "Whoa, wait a minute! I don't understand this." And Here's the test. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Or maybe if we could just have it, maybe Sarah open in a separate window. You know, then mm -hmm. something like that that they can go back and forth. And then we also probably want to have a back button on the um, the survey. Uh, 
thing, you know, if you want to go back to the information so that they can go back and forth. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Sarah, for staying on. <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay. Um, any other? Um, so hopefully, as it reads now, um, let me see if I can. Okay, here we go. If a building permit, sorry, if a building permit is required in the Holland Hills HOD, the Fairfax County Architecture Review Board will review, review and approve the proposal before issuance of a building permit for certain exterior renovations. Cons building permits, sorry, for certain exterior renovations, construction or demolitions in harmony with the recommendations in the, apologize for all the extra words, historic overlay districts design guidelines. Examples of items that would require a building permit include decks, screened in porches and building additions. And then what is your view of the ARB approval requirement for, um, ARB approval requirement for building permit improvements Within historical within the historical really district. I have Laura, a yeah. question about I that. Can. Sure. Hands up. Uh, I'm a little bit uncomfortable about the um, asking whether or not they have a positive or negative view. I'm not sure I can really articulate uh, what makes me uncomfortable about that, but it seems to be inviting uh, more than what. The survey is equipped to answer. Okay. Thanks, Ron. Why, why would you be answer. uncomfortable? Why would you be uncomfortable? Don't you want? I thought the supervisor wants to know how people feel about it, and that's an integral part of an HOD. It's it's what it makes it tick. The whole thing. The ARB is the HOD essentially. That's so a would fair you want question. to know if they feel good about it or bad about it? Or hate the idea or love the idea. I mean, the other thing is too. what I'm thinking is that if we come back and the majority of the answers are. Um, no, we don't support it and then we go to this question and it's negative for all of those. Then we can draw the conclusions that people don't like the historic overlay district proposal because of the ARB of approval of building permits. Does that make so we're trying to. We can match those up. Um, or they can say negative on this one and then approve it and then we or say recommend approval and then we would say, oh, well, that, that's not the issue that's really holding them back. Does that make how sense? How about a suggestion and how about instead of saying positive, negative, no opinion, making making uh, six uh, other instead of instead of no opinion, instead of instead of. Uh, okay. Instead of neg I'm sorry, uh, yeah, instead of no opinion, say other, other opinion or something, that gives them the chance if they want to say yes and no, you know, they could raise the <laughs> questions there. What what question are we looking at? Three or four? We're in three. So, three. Um, three oh. has the, uh, the, we're talking about the response to three, yeah. the response to three. So one would be positive and then gradations between one and five, which is positive and negative, and then Six would be no opinion, and I just put suggestion other um, instead of no opinion. Oh, so you take away the sliding scale? The, the no, the we didn't. I think I think we're going to keep the sliding scale, and then just have a place for like a checkbox for no opinion, or or other, or like have two checkboxes for that. And Mary, were you recommending like a comment box in that? Or were you? Well, yeah, I mean, because I see the same thing, the same thing with with question four, because that would give people a chance to raise issues that Stork, you know, would help Stork figure out where, where, if, if, where we might need to go before we get into this. You know, if more, if more, if more information is needed for the people, then he, it would be good for him to get. Okay. So the, the thought was is that we would put a comment box at the end, um, possibly. Um, the only thing about the comment box is that um, we were hoping to just have a point of contact, and I have Nick's um, email down there right now. That if we had questions, so that would be more tailored, and you would, you know, be we could follow the questions more regularly. If we get a comment box and it's just design guidelines. You know, that doesn't help us 
and doesn't help us solve the problem. You know what I mean? Like if, if it's because if, when you but, get the comments, I, I think I think it would help. It would help them know where. To, I mean, if they if they raise good questions, it would help people like Nick to follow up on. I, I mean, okay. a comment box doesn't have to be. I mean, you can either comment below or contact Nick. Okay. Yeah, that's what the last kind of piece is yeah. there at the end. Um, just because the concern about comment boxes that the comment boxes, um, it, it's good and bad. We're trying to you know get answers, but I'm hoping that if people have significant enough questions or concerns, they'd be reaching out to us so that we can also gain an input of how far a survey reached and what the issues are, what the flaws were, the survey, the successes were. Um, so I, I think that if we have that comment um, to Nick or myself, that we should be okay. Um, <coughs> Laura, and, and so, yes. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but it's Bob Kinzer. Uh, I would suggest that your uh, no opinion or, or, or certainly the other and, and uh, on the question four would kind of obfuscate uh, Stork's request for yes or no. Yeah, I talked about that, but we, I think we always want to include the option of, for example, I and mean, you're hoping if people take the survey that they care enough to, to answer yes or no and have an opinion. But if they go through and they're really kind of like, you know, what what do I do? Right? Like, you know, do they do they care if they have to go through this extra review? Yes, no, maybe. I don't think a lot of people are going to answer no opinion, but we want to leave that open. But I, but I hear you on that one. Um, but I, I think we wanted to make sure if people just wanted more information and didn't care if they had an option to. Mm -hmm. You always want to include on the survey. Uh, I hear you on the yes or no, and that's a but that, that's something maybe just to clarify with Supervisor Store because he wants that quick, <laughs> the quick yes or no. Yes. Okay. Are you, Laura, are you considering putting in a, a fourth response, which is need more information? No. Is that? No. Okay. Um, no, no, no. This is for the fourth question. Do you support, or what did I have? What is the question? You support you establishing support a establishing. historic over, yeah. Yeah, I have yes, no, or no opinion. And then I'm having a note that the, that the no opinion piece adds another layer, like adds another response option. It, it, and I'm going to confer with the supervisor to see what he wants, if that's what he wants. You know, if he really just wants a yes or no, um, that's just something we need to follow up with the supervisor on. Oh, okay. And well, then, I would think um, I would think he'd want to know. I would think he'd want to know how many people just took care. Yeah. Well, and, and that's what I'm going to ask him. But just that's his call to make. Um, and then, Millie, to your question, we're going to have the, the last kind of paragraph at the end doesn't have a question number in front of it, which says for follow up questions or comments, please contact Nick at Supervisor Stork's office um, with his phone number and email address. And then um, we can go from there. Um, but I do want to get it's 815. I do want to get through some of the additional questions that people had and kind of get whether or not we want to include those questions um, in this survey. Um, I think we're to the point. Um, we went through Barbara's questions. I think um, those are mostly on the questions that we had. And then um, the last question Barbara had was, uh, "Do you support establishing a historic overlay district?" We're following along on the Excel line ten, designed to protect the architectural integrity of the Holland Hills neighborhood. And um, that question, I think, is okay. I think it's a little bit leading. Um, but because there's more than just the architectural integrity of the neighborhood, I think we want to um, have. But it's just well, read like the petition, which was very well, leading. And I'm trying to, um, I'm trying um, to be as transparent as possible. And that's like the question three. I appreciate all the words and thing on that one because I want to make sure we're kind of yes or no. Like, do you, you do, do you understand this and do you want this? If no, then you know, X, Y, Z, but Barbara, did you have a, did you want to, um, um, talk about that question? The last question that you recommended, or are you okay with kind of tabling it? You're muted. For you that right now a house is being torn down, so they're coming. They're buying houses 
and they're going to knock them down and we can't stop them. So if we why are they knocking that, it down, Barbara? Is it rotting from the inside out? Completely? No, it is not. They a want a bigger house. They want a bigger house. So, so that it, that it would be though addressed. Time. That would be addressed, Barbara. I think in the background information section on the significance and history of the of the district in those tabs. Well, um, I mean, the HOD is an RC. historical district, and the purpose of the historical district is to um, preserve the architectural integrity of the neighborhood. That's why we're doing this, and that's going to be in the background section. Okay. I'm not, it's I, gonna be, I think you've you've I've made my point. You've heard it. Let's move I got on. it. Um, I'm going to put. Um, uh, mission. Okay. Thanks, Barbara. Okay. Um, and then we had ensure to survey disclaimer. We've got that um, the white paper back. These are questions are familiar. These are starting to get into your questions. We talked about the disclaimer already. I'll skip over that one. The white paper in the background, um, we, we're not doing the white paper anymore. It's going to be at the each individual tabs with the paragraph, but um, it should not include any opinion about private covenants or rules. That's that's correct. It won't. Um, there will just be the tabs from the county perspective. Um, the survey results, um, that's a question for the supervisor. We talked about at the end, they would take the survey results and do an analysis of what they felt like was the next best step moving forward from the survey analysis. So I'm going through these a little bit quickly. Um, question 14, Melly, you had, did you sign the position petition circulated by the Civic Association over two years ago? And if yes, did you have an opinion about the HOD or did you want more information? Um, so with that question, it kind of goes back to, um, I think question number two that we had about have you attended other meetings or do you want another meeting? Um, was the intent of that Millie to try to figure out if, if people had been paying attention and or needed another meeting? If that's the case, I think we might already have that addressed. No, the the the, the um, intent of that was to, to that was the very beginning of all this, the petition. So that was to lay the groundwork for the rest of the questions because the petition was extremely biased and when people were came to the door and gave it and ask the signatures, they were told that they wanted to keep, if they wanted to keep Holland Hills beautiful in their house, that they had to sign it. And Patrick Kelly said in the community meeting, oh gosh, you know, that was a little misleading because a lot of those people just wanted more information. They, ne they weren't necessarily voting yay or nay or saying, yes, I want an HOD. They were saying, well, let's look into it. And it's a, that's a valid point. Yeah, let's look into it. Um, but my point in that was to set the scene. It's a scene setter. It's valid. It's accurate. I have it okay. in front of me. I think so, you're just beating a dead horse. What difference does it make what, whether people signed the petition two years ago or not? Because it's a numbers game, according to the supervisor. And that well, seems uh, number, the only number that counts now is the answer to question. Um, do you support the HOD? That's the only number he cares about. He doesn't care about what happened two, ye two years ago. So I think so what I'm going to do, I'm gonna, okay, I'm going to mention the petition and the authorization, the background information, just because I think it needs to be a part of the story that the community was supportive of it at the beginning, um, looking into it, right? Setting the stage for looking into it. Um, and that's where we are that's now. We're looking at whether or not to adopt it. So would that be okay, that's, Millie? If I put that in? Yeah, um, I think that's. I think that's reasonable. Okay. I do think okay. it needs to be there because it did start okay. it all. Okay. Because a lot of these don't necessarily have to be the questions as much as what information information do we need to put in the background and make sure that people have all the stuff that they need. Um, well, I, okay. I put it. I put it together, Laura, because I thought it was going to be an attitudinal yep. survey. No, that's perfectly fine. Um, and here, here we are. We're just kind of. Um, I will. I will define the contributing versus non-contributing in the background section, so we can skip that one. Um, uh, are you required to submit a permit request? By okay, we did. We just talked about that one. Um, about the A or B permit um, process, um, and then I, 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 we really can't go into the questions on the DRC that you had mentioned, um, Millie. Um, I think five, six, and seven. And you had, um, are you willing to submit voluntary to the DRC and review process? 
we can, I think we can mention there's a separate VRC process that happens, but with the disclaimer, right? We have the disclaimer in place. Um, uh, let's see. The disclaimer is very important. Yeah, yeah. I think that helps with some of these questions too. Um, uh, and then the questioning about the, the permit process is working and satisfies your requirements. That's a, a bigger, that's a bigger county permit that I don't think we're getting, and that's fine. Because I know you were looking at this a little bit different. And then um, we took out, we had this question too, Millie, about have you ever submitted a permit request to the county? Um, and then we took it out because we, were, we weren't sure how it really, um, other than we can give some of the ARB process and the building permit process, you know, give some timelines of, you know, uh, what it takes to do that. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. But just kind no, of I could, you know. It's curious, Laura, you probably aren't aware of this, but um, I was struck when I saw the last newsletter from the uh, association because there have been 14 in the past two months, 14 requests to the DRC to, to do um, to do um, or review for them to review projects that people have in mind, including a demolition of a whole house, including some major additions. And it's curious for a community that really, really is dying to have an HOD why people are rushing to get all these things approved by the county first. Just a thought. That's why I put it in there. Okay. I'm um, not aware of anybody since I'm on the DRC. I'm not aware of anybody rushing to the DRC and many of the things that came before us are not things that would require permit. For example, there are a couple of roofs that came before us. You don't need a DRC. You don't need a, uh, a building permit in order to change your roof. So it was, you know, somebody changing the um the railing on their existing deck. You don't need a building permit to do that. So there are a lot of things that come before us that are not part of the building permit. I uh, that don't require a building permit. And so, for example, there are people who are coming to us and they just want to discuss whether or not there should, be, you know, what do we think about um, solar panels. What should they do? We have any ideas for them about solar panels? So, I mean, that's also the nature of some of the conversations. Okay, all right, I'm not gonna get in that discussion. Um, this is the DRC discussion, but um, to that point, uh, Millie, I've, had, I've heard I have fielded a couple of queries about building permits in Holland House, um, so I have heard some of them come in, but that doesn't mean that they required. A or B review, it just let them come in and ask if they need to, because that they're on an inventory site right now. Um, so then um, do you need some more informa information and or your own research? I think that goes back to the question about do we need another community meeting, that type of yes. thing um, from this information, or what would you think would be helpful to provide or something like that? Um, so I think we talked about that. And then um, your question 12, um, would you like to have the choice to be part of the H? The historic overlay district are not part of the historic overlay district, and is that to your point about being exempted? You know, from you know, um, or choosing to not have your property involved, but still support. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I think okay. I think a lot of people don't want it. From okay. anecdotally, from people that have contacted me, there are a lot of people who don't like the idea at all. And okay. I know what you're what you've said, and I respect that, Laura. That you <laughs> you you have your guidelines and your rules. But there are a lot of people in this community that are not keen on it at all. Okay. All right. Um, Grace, if you would make a note to bring that question, I'm going to highlight this because I want to make sure we bring that up with the supervisor. Um, and sure. then, um, thanks, Grace. And then, um, um, this is one of Jerry's comments about bringing one more virtual meeting prior to the survey going out. Um, I'm not sure we were anticipating that because I think the supervisor wants a survey to go out, but we will bring that up. And if we don't have one before, I think it's probably prudent though to have one um, after. Um, maybe presenting the survey results and, and if, if we decide to keep moving forward um, and, and next steps so that everybody's aware of the public hearings and that type of thing. As Mary mentioned, not a lot of people attend the public hearings. <laughs> um, although I feel like people will attend this one if it goes forward. Um, uh, and then Jerry, thank you for providing this list of documents to put in there. I know we didn't provide you guys with the public input before then, but a lot of this information is going to be on public input 
um, and the ones I had mentioned that I need to flag for uh, Sarah to put on there are these National Register ones, but um, we will be happy to do that. Um, and then Jerry also made a list of FAQs. I think some of you saw that, but I think some of that will be in the beginning of the survey. Um, so I think those are pretty much covered, um, but we'll still kind of have the FAQ in place. I think this is the last one. Oops. I think this is from Andy. Okay. Sorry, y'all. Oh, yeah, this is from Andy. This is Andy just um, talking about um, turnover in the community and making sure that we might we might need another meeting. And Andy, I don't know if you wanted to expand on that or Jerry or expand on some of the comments that um, I just went through. Um, now, my concern was just that there's a lot of new people. So if you talk about this, like we were talking earlier about this, the the first cert, or not survey, but the um, thing that went around to get this whole thing started. Petition, petition, petition. yeah. Mm -hmm. They might not know anything about that. And so it's like the street, I think there's probably like 10 houses that are new people. Mm -hmm. so know how that might affect everything going on and making sure that they actually know what's going on. Because I didn't know there were, like, before I knew about the website, which it'll explain it before you take the survey, it looked like it was just going to be this document with yeah. a survey. So yeah. it and, might help. No, no, that's fine. And I'm, I understand that completely. Part of that is on us because we're on the fly here trying to do these survey questions and get them out to you without giving you how we were going to do it. But um, I'm hopeful, and it sounds like we're in a little bit more of agreement now of, you know, what needs to go on these tabs? What information needs to be in them? Needs to be short and succinct and to the point, very clear, not leading. Um, and then you'll get through those, go through the survey, and be able to take those four, five, six questions, um, whatever the final number may be, um, with this wording. So um, it is 829, um, so right on the dot 830. But um, I'm willing, and Nick, I think we. We'd be willing to take the question, like, if you have any comments on the questions, maybe till uh, midweek, maybe Wednesday, Wednesday, if you have any last minute comments, um, I can send around this draft that that we have tonight with, with these in them. But, um, like I said, it's got to be a very, very quick turnaround um, because we need to talk to the supervisor, like, this week to get the survey printed, to get everything ready to the mail out um, and to get it all set up. Um, for September, which seems like it's far away, but it's only two weeks. So not that far. Um, and then to work on that language with Sarah on these tabs. Um, but are there any final thoughts, questions? Please feel free. Well, I have one. This is Lee Cutler. Hi, Lee. Okay, uh, this is a quick one. Um, something that could be immensely helpful. All sure. right. If people really want to know what happens with the whole ARB process, is uh -huh. to let them know they can simply read the minutes of the meetings. Very revealing, very interesting, and it really gets in you into the, the nuts and bolts of what happens. Okay, even though many of the projects are for literal, literally historic monuments, etc. You can uh -huh. see how the ARB meetings work and it's very insightful. So, you know, I nowhere in all of this is there a reference for people to look at the minutes of the ARB, but from my perspective, I think that would be immensely helpful to at least have it as an option somewhere. No, Lee, that's a great recommendation. I put that on our list for the ARB tab. Like for more information on the ARB, go to the ARB webpage. You can view all the minutes, meetings, videos, you know, all, anything that you want. Bylaws, nobody cares about bylaws, but <laughs> the ARB. Thank um, you. Yeah, thank you, Lee. Okay, well, one more minute, but I wanted to do a sincere thank you to all of you for going through this process. I know it's not easy um, and we're hopefully making progress uh, moving forward on this, however, however it may end. Um, but um, I just wanted to thank you all. I appreciate your um, patience with me and with staff and with um, uh, working on these questions with us. We, we do know it's an integral part of this piece and we want to make sure clear as Millie said, clear as mud, obviously, but trying to get it as clear as we can to the to the rest of the community to be able to make an informed decision 
um, about whether or not they support the historic overlay district. Nick, did you have anything you wanted to add? Uh, no, just to echo what you said, Laura, thank you all for your continued participation and, and working through this document with, with, all, with all of us. Um, I assure you that I'll, I'll chat with the supervisor this week um, about the outcome of this meeting and um, we'll get everyone's uh, comments and you know questions incorporated um, to the best of our abilities and hopefully we'll have a product that the community can understand and make an educated and informed decision on. So thanks again. Okay. All right. I'm gonna um finalize I'm gonna do a quick edit of these questions that we went through tonight and then I will send them out. Comments by Thursday, make a break, and then we're gonna send them to the supervisor's office. Um uh and then we'll go from there. But thank you all. And Nick and I are available if you need us. Um, and uh, I will tell you, we're down staff right now. And I know Nick is down staff too. So we're trying as much as we can to respond to your queries. So apologize if it takes a little bit longer than it needs to, but um, we doing our best. But thank you all for your time tonight. Appreciate it. Um, I, um, thank you. Good night. Yes. Thank you. Thank Have you a good night, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.